In this video, I'm going to be talking to you all about the internet. So the internet is the backbone for the World Wide Web. In order for the World Wide Web to work, it needs some sort of system, some sort of way of transmitting data from one system to another. And the way that that works is the internet. So, as I said, the basic idea of the internet is in order to communicate with some remote system. If we want to send the message, hello world, from my computer to someone else's computer, somewhere else in the world, we need a way of transmitting that message. So in this case, we're imagining, hey, somehow these two computers are linked up and we send the message, hello world, uh, maybe over a wire, maybe over something else. We'll discuss that kind of later in this video. Um, but the, the core idea is sending a message from my system to another system over a network remotely. Um, but what happens when my system is not directly connected to that system? How do I send this message when I don't have a direct connection? Obviously, it makes sense, you know, maybe there's literally just a straight wire from my computer to my neighbor's computer that I can just start maybe pushing data over that wire. But what happens when there's not? Well, the internet is what solves that problem. So we look at the internet as a distributed system of machines. And so maybe I can't reach my target destination um, directly, but maybe I know another system and they know how to get to it get that message to another system into another system into another system and i can just pass my message to the system i can talk to and they can just pass the message along again this is a distributed system i send my message to a computer that thinks they know how to get it to another computer which can get it to another computer to another computer and eventually all the way to the destination. So in this way, we look at the internet as a network of networks. So I can be directly connected to some other system, and that other system is connected to a different system, and that other system is connected to a different system. And it's this big, wide network of all these different systems that are in some way connected into this broader network. Um, this network of networks. And as long as all of these systems are in some way connected, um, we can try to find a path of passing a message from my system all the way to the target system by navigating through this network of networks. And that is what the internet is. So how does this all work? Well, as with a lot of things in computer science, the way that this works is with the concept of abstraction. So we've already kind of hinted at that idea that in order to um, service HTTP requests, let's say, over the internet, we're using the internet as kind of this system which we are able to pass messages along. We're just abstracting away the concept of assuming basically, hey, we have some sort of system that is going to allow us to pass messages. Once we have that system, we're going to just put HTTP over it. We're going to be able to have a World Wide Web living on top of the internet. We're going to be able to abstract away this communication layer and just say, hey, I have a communication layer. Now let's communicate stuff over it. Um, and we do that with abstraction, as is very common in computer science. So the internet itself has several layers of abstraction. Um, in this case, we're looking at the TCP IP uh, model of viewing this abstraction. There's other models for kind of viewing all of this as well, but we're going to look at this one because it's a little bit simpler. There's less layers. So the very first layer that we're going to be looking at is the uh, link layer. So as we said before at the very beginning of this lecture video, um, we can imagine that there's some physical connection, some physical link between my computer and another computer. And of course, as we said, all of these are in some way linked together to bring up a broader network of networks. But let's just look at the layer right now of, hey, I'm connected to some immediate neighbor. Well, what we need is this layer of looking at this, of saying, hey, my system is directly connected to this system, and I need to be able to just directly pass information from my system to my immediate neighbor. And this is what the link layer concerns, concerns itself with. So we have options for how we're physically transmitting this data. So for instance, in this case, we're kind of looking at this cool looking wire thing where we can imagine, you know, 
uh, data transmitting directly over these wires, but it doesn't have to be directly over wires as we have all come to understand. We can be talking to satellites, we can be talking to radio towers, we can be talking to um, our wireless access point at our home, we can be talking over ethernet through a wire, we can be talking all sorts of physical linked connections as a way of transmitting data physically. I mean, you could even imagine flashing a, a flashlight and doing Morse code to another system and that system understanding your Morse code and transmitting it, right? There's all sorts of ways that you could physically transmit data from one person to an immediate neighbor and make that work. Um, and all of these can be swapped out, which is kind of the beautiful thing of abstraction, the beautiful thing of the internet is that as long as we provide some basic facility for transmitting data, um, linking one node to another just directly, um, we can start building concepts on top of that, start abstracting. So that gets us to the next layer, which is the internet layer. Um, so obviously this, this video is called the internet. Um, this is the layer that concerns itself with finding the right computer. So you can kind of see this evolving graph with time, and we can see that there's a bunch of nodes with immediate neighbor nodes, and they can talk to each other, but some nodes don't have direct links to another node. Um, fortunately, there's this broader graph, this broader system, where in some way there's some route from one node to another node, um, and the internet layer concerns itself with effectively building up this longer route of connecting from neighbor A to neighbor B to neighbor C to neighbor D. And the interesting thing with this uh, image that's kind of playing out is that this can be an evolving thing. The, the best way to route my bit of data from my uh, computer out to some remote computer can change with time. And that might happen due to traffic delays, might happen due to, uh, let's say, an immediate link just gets cut in half, right? This, this layer can be very fluid in terms of being able to find multiple routes, being able to find a more efficient route. And the internet layer deals with this routing component, deals with getting from my computer off to the remote computer. So on top of that, we have the transport layer. And the transport layer um, gets to sit on top of that internet layer. And it says basically, okay, so you're able to get my data from my computer off to any other um, remote system that's connected into this network of networks. Um, but I have a bunch of programs running on my system, right? So I, I have my desktop running several services, several programs, and some remote server might have several programs running. Um, this transport layer at its core, among other things, deals with finding the right program. So we've already gotten to the right computer, now we need to get that data to the right program. And it does this by introducing a concept of ports. Um, so that I'm able to transmit data to the target machine and then it knows how to get, now that it's on the target machine, to the correct program. Because we might, again, have multiple services running on one specific uh, system running on the network. The, there's several programs, though, running on that system. And we want to get to the right program on that system. Um, and also, as we'll discuss in the networking um, Set series of videos. It, it provides other facilities as well as, for instance, uh, TCP provides the ability to have a um, circuit connection, basically provides reliability because you might start thinking, okay, what happens if my data is being transmitted and then as it was kind of routing, some something happens in the network where the packet of data gets lost. Well, we want to be able to potentially retry sending that and these up higher, lower level um, layers don't actually think about that. TCP addresses that concern. Um, but at its core, the transport layer, it deals with finding the right program on a system. And then from there, we have the application layer. And that deals with how we're going to talk with the program. So in this series, we're specifically concerned with HTTP. So HTTP is an application layer protocol that is how the World Wide Web works. They're all speaking, all of these systems on the internet are talking HTTP, 
and they are able to communicate over HTTP. And that has its own set of protocols, its own set of properties um, for doing that. But that's not the only application layer protocol. There's also, for instance, FTP. So the ability to um, upload and download files on our, some remote server. There's also SMTP, which deals with how email is sent from one system to another system. There is also SSH, which you've become familiar with in this course, the ability to SSH into some remote system um, and start interacting with a shell, uh, start interacting directly with uh, spinning up processes on some remote system. There's all of these application layer protocols that are uh, can be built now on top of it. So as a reminder, right, all of this TCP IP, it's viewed as a layer of abstraction on top of a layer of abstraction on top of a layer of abstraction, which is ultimately how computer science works, right? We build some sort of system that has some properties, and then we decide, hey, I want to build something on top of that that has more and cooler properties for us.